Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. Today we are going to read knitting charts. I've got five tips for you which will hopefully get you going if it's the first time reading charts. Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah, I'm here with Knitting Natter to help you learn to knit the easy way. Reading knitting charts might seem daunting if it's your first time. You don't want to make a mistake and have to one pick it all and what do all the symbols mean? So I have five tips for you today. Um, the first three I'm gonna to give to you now, and then the next couple I will be demonstrating reading charts. So the first one is very simple. Pick a symmetrical chart. And I'm just gonna mention the third tip as well. You're reading in different directions when you are reading a chart. So if it's a symmetrical one, it won't matter whether you accidentally you're reading in the wrong direction. So, this is ideal if you pick out a diamond, a heart, or as I'm gonna to demonstrate today with a Christmas tree. It all goes in the same direction and it's symmetrical, which means that yes, you read it one way or the other, it will definitely read right. So that's my first tip, pick a symmetrical one if it's your first time, and then you're less likely to make mistakes and you feel like you're winning. My next tip, go and find a knit and purl chart. No other jargon and definitely no colour. If you're reading a chart for the first time, you've never come across them before when you're knitting, then it's kind of likely that you've never done any more advanced knitting um, either. They do crop up in knit and purl patterns, they crop up in lace, in cable and in colour knitting. So just be aware of that. If suddenly you've never done lace knitting before and it's all this complicated chart that you've got to read, then you're going to have to learn lace knitting and chart reading at the same time and it could completely mess you up. So when you start lace knitting, you really want to read it as the jargon, as the abbreviations. It will mean it's much easier for you. If you want to start cable knitting, read the jargon, read the abbreviations for the first time. And then maybe after you've knitted two or three cable patterns, then you could read one in a chart as well, because then you feel a bit more comfortable with the abbreviations and actually doing the cable techniques, then it will work better for you. Especially with the color knitting as well. Color knitting is something that I would suggest you take on once you're used to reading charts, once you're used to knitting, once you've got the knit and purl down, easy peasy, and it feels like the next step is ready for you. So knit and purl stitches for the first time you're reading knitting charts, just make it easier on yourself. If you're sitting here and thinking, well, that's not fair, I just picked up a lace chart. Well, if you've done lace by reading the pattern, then go for it. If you are reading a chart for the first time and doing lace knitting for the first time, go easy on yourself and find a lace pattern that's not using charts. And then I would say, go easy on yourself as well and find a chart that's knit and purl stitches. Just to get you going with those two things, just do a couple of small projects so you feel it feels easier. And then you can bring them together and knit that amazing lace pattern that you've picked out for yourself. You'll feel motivated. It will feel easier um, and you're less likely to make mistakes. So that is my second tip, the third tip. Now, when you are knitting using a chart, you're knitting from side to side. When you're knitting on single pointed needles, you turn the needle every time you knit. Right to left on the right side row and then from left to right on the wrong side row. So that's just something you will get used to, something you'll have to memorise and like I said in the first tip, if you're using a symmetrical chart when you're starting, it won't matter if you make a mistake. Do not worry about it, do not hassle. But if you're knitting on a circular needle, you'll always knit in the same direction, right to left, right to left, right to left, right to left. So you'll be reading the chart in the same direction as well. Always read the chart right to left, right to left, right to left. And I realise that I'm moving my hands. I need to have the um, mindset of an aerobics teacher here, don't I? This is your right, this is my left, this is your right, this is my left. <laughs> but I don't have that. I'm not an aerobics teacher. So, yes, excuse me for doing that. But it, it will make more sense when you look at the chart. 
So yes, actually, when I am knitting on circular needles, I'm knitting in one direction all the time. That is the first three tips. Let's go straight over to the recorded demo where I will show you the next two tips. So my next tip for you involves these post-its or sticky notes. And all you need is one, usually one, because the um, chart, the chart's wider than you'll, you can use a few next to each other. But what you're going to do is put one across the row there. Better. There you go. You can only see the row that you're working on. And you mustn't forget to read the top instructions here. So row five, which is that one, and following 19 rows. Knit one, purl one, knit one. Follow the chart, knit one, purl one, knit one. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, you can see these spaces here on right side rows, which are also odd rows. They are knit stitches. So these blank spaces I'm going to knit. But I'm going to do the knit one, Purl one, knit one at the side. And then I'm going to knit all the way along because that's what the chart says. And you notice here, I'm only looking at one row. And that means that it's so much easier. It feels easier. I'm not overwhelmed by what's to come. And I'm not overwhelmed by thinking, am I on that row or that row? And now I'm at the side there. So it feels easier looking at one row at a time. We're only knitting one row at a time, let's face it. So that's the first row. That is row five. Now, I can move this up. And that's the beauty of the post-it. We can just take it off and put it back down again. You can also use a piece of paper with a paper clip on the side if you want. That kind of thing. Anything that will just give you the chance to see one row at a time. I'm going to knit the side again. And realise that we're on the wrong side this time. So we've got space, we've got blanks, squares, and we've got dotted squares here. So once I've done this border, I will give you my next tip. Now, I did this on the other row, but it's a lot, lot more relevant here. I want you to think not one stitch at a time, but in blocks. Because if you start thinking one stitch at a time, you're going to go, right, I'm working from this side because it's a wrong side row. I've got the first stitch and that's a purl. There you go. I'm on the wrong side. It's a blank. So it's a purl. So I'm going to purl that one. What's the next one? That's a blank as well. So I'm going to purl it. What's the next one? That's a purl. And then you're going to get annoyed with yourself that you're looking at it every time to just look at one stitch. So I want you to think in blocks. Now that we're halfway along, we can go, okay, so we've got three knit stitches and then six purl stitches. You can hold that in your mind and say, okay, three knits, one, two, three, and three purls. One, two, three, and three more purls. One, two, three. You can think about these in blocks of stitches rather than single stitches. So much of the time, um, if you're creating a pattern like this, it's not going to be one stitch at a time changing constantly. There wouldn't be a chart, it would just tell you that in the written instructions. So something like this, it will, this one even is a repetitive pattern. So you're doing one stitch and then I, it may be six stitches in between it, I can't quite tell from here. But then it's two stitches and four or five in between. And it's just repeated across the row. So you don't have to keep looking at the pattern. You don't have to keep looking at the chart. You just remember it's two stitches and four stitches. And you just, it becomes um, um, something that you memorise rather than something you need to keep looking at the chart for. I do hope that's made it easier for you. That's five tips for reading your first knitting chart. Do give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And I will leave a link in the description if you'd like that knitting kit. If you want to knit up those coasters and the table mats that go with them, then you can get a kit or indeed the pattern, the digital pattern from my shop. If you choose the kit, then you don't just get the yarn, you get the pattern in a leaflet. And in the leaflet too, there are QR codes leading you to video demos, demos including this video, to help you um, knit your way through the pattern. And there's a QR code sending you straight to the digital pattern if you prefer to read it digitally. For this Christmas, the last posting date is Friday the 18th of December. 
I just said February and I had to edit that out. <laughs> Friday the 18th of December. But if you want to knit it up for Christmas, then order it this week and you can certainly finish knitting that before Christmas. And like I said, if you're not in our postal area at the moment, then you may well be in a couple of years time and we'll be expanding the postal area um, as the years go by, I know. And um, you can always get the digital pattern now on our shop for that as well. So did you find last week the blocking demo? Once you knit something like this, because the knit and purl stitch is interchanging, you may need to have your finished item flat. If it's a pair of mittens, something like that, you can just start wearing them. But if it is a coaster or a table mat like this one, then you'll want to block it. So last week's video, the blocking demo, will give you all the instructions and all the help and support you need for that. So do go and watch that. And like I said last week, we also have the blocking mats and the blocking pins available in the shop. As I record this, they're there. Fingers crossed we've still got stock. So the link is in the description for all of that too. Thanks so much for joining me this week. Do give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe and click on the bell for notifications. If you click on the bell, then YouTube will let you know whenever there's a new video. I'm here every Tuesday, every week with a brand new video. I will see you again soon. Bye for now. Happy knitting.